Well, I am back. Today, back with that ring that was left over from the, uh, the burrow. And uh, yesterday I was playing with it and uh, trying to figure out exactly what I was going to do. So what I did is I took it in the disc sander and I threw it up the bottom, very flat. Put this base on it and I started turning it. Unfortunately, I didn't uh, give it enough time for it to dry up, so I kind of lost it during the turning and uh, I didn't lose it per se, but it separated from the glue thing. So I decided, okay, I'm going to glue it up, put it on the tension, uh, pressure and give it enough time. So it's had enough time this time for sure. Today I've uh, actually been a little bit busy. Uh, the lighting in here you might find that uh, is quite a bit better. Um, I added an 8 foot fluorescent, dual fluorescent strip on my ceiling, which makes a huge difference. And uh, I, uh, up to now, I've been playing on the lathe. Uh, I'll show you what I did there uh, in addition to the VFD. I wanted the VFD, but I didn't want to be reaching over the VFD and making all the controls out of the uh, uh, main unit. And it's actually recommended that you you put the VFD away and uh, in a box, you know, a metal box or something, to keep it away from the elements, uh, sawdust and vibration uh, and all kinds of other stuff. But I don't, I didn't go to that extreme. I got the VFD behind the lathe. Let me show you. So I got the VFD installed right in here. I got a little guard. Uh, I don't use the functions in here at all. What I did is I uh, picked up a two gang plastic box and I had picked up a uh, uh, petiometer, I can't say that word, anyway, a speed dial and a dual switch. This dual switch was supposed to work forward to one direction, reverse to the opposite direction. And no matter what I do, I've tried all the wiring, I've gone through the parameters, I'm not getting it to go on uh, reverse. I've reversed the wires inside. I've I've gone every combination that I could possibly uh, think of in the wiring for those three wires, which go in three positions. It's it's just three wires, uh, uh, you know. So it's not that hard to figure. It comes from the VFD. You override the control, and everything gets control over here. So. Well, I got the boulders there. But anyway, I have the speed control right over here and the on off. And of course, I still have the on off switch here as well. If I kill it here, it uh, just gives it a little bit of time and I have the control of it again. Now, I was thinking of how, where I wanted to mount this because I didn't want to be in the line of fire, but uh, uh, I think that this is okay and this is not something that I'm going to be playing with all the time. My main kill switch will be the controller. Well, let's get started. Now, on that pit, uh, pitometer, uh, pitiometer, I also picked up a digital gauge for uh, reading my RPMs. Go figure. They send me the done digital readout, but no pickup. So I had to go online and order a separate pickup to go to this. I thought the price was a little bit cheap, and the picture only showed that. I went back to check. I only showed that. It did not show the pickup. You can't use it without the pickup. But anyway, I ordered uh, a pickup, so it will be a while. And I'll put a magnetic pickup coming from in here, going down into the box, and wire it up, and I'll have my actual RPMs 
displayed right on the uh, the unit. So I am ready to get started with this. fast over here this transition because I'm trying to feather out what's going on between two flat planes and the width meaning how far up my outside edge is and this transition is always a dangerous situation the best way to do something like this of course is to flatten up the inside make a recess and have this piece come true and that way when you're evening it out and making the transition you are slightly higher on the piece and uh, that goes also when you're doing uh, segmented compound uh, bowls now I got a crack over here this was done yesterday when I lost the piece so, but I'm not going to worry too much about it. I'm going to leave the bowl as it is so I don't lose it. I do have a little bit of a gouge here, so I might have to work this area right here a little bit and see if I can, can clean that up. Now, in the back on the transition, I'm just going to clean it up and make a little step on it. And uh, by doing that, I'm not going as thin. So by going with a parting tool right here, I'm making a little step over there, but it's better than the alternative, which is really the possibility of losing it right over there. Still don't like that. I don't have much thickness, especially like I said, right here. I'm gonna shape this outside so it, I can meet up with these dark spots.
Well, I'm not gonna go any further with that. I'm gonna let the sandpaper do the rest. Very, very thin right here. For those of you who don't know what uh, I'm using for sanding sealer, I use a uh, Minwax. Uh, it's a water-based uh, sanding sealer. But if you don't have accessibility to uh, the Minwax products in your area, in your country, you can, uh, I'm sure that you could probably pick up shellac. And if you, uh, dilute shellac uh, with alcohol quite a bit. It gives you a nice sealer as well. Uh, make it thin and uh, and uh, then you apply a few coats of that and uh, send it down. I use this because it's quick dry and uh, pretty much by the time I'm done applying it I can start wet sanding it. And you'll notice I always, uh, the majority of the time, I uh, wet sand all my pieces. And uh, I wet sand that with uh, whatever I got in hand, but anywhere from a thousand to two thousand grit. Um, and like I said, it depends on what I have. Um, when I'm doing wet sanding, I'm not relying on cutting down on any wood fibers or anything like that. All I'm doing is flattening up my sanding sealer and making sure that it stays on any pores uh, that might be existent. So, and uh, you know, if you've got a method that you're using and you like it uh, and it's working fine for you you know there's no need I mean yeah it's I shouldn't say there's no need uh, it's always good to experiment and see what what works better uh, you know if one item one particular product works better than another but uh, I've tried so many different things and I really don't see uh, the end results I don't see any difference um, it's what you put into it uh, that makes the big difference. Uh, how much sanding you do uh, prior to adding these, uh, the sanding seal and stuff like that. Those are the key factors that will uh, ultimately make a change, make a difference on your finish. I can get a super high gloss with this finish and you know, a lot of times I get just a matte finish, uh, uh, not super. And the reason for that is it's just I'm not applying the same amount of time into the uh, finished product. Now this is a nice piece and I hate to rush through it. And yet, I see a lot of areas over here that, you know, it seems like it's, it was rushed. Um, I might see how this face looks because I'm not totally crazy about this crack in here. Um, you know, if worst, if push comes to shove, I can still part this out one more time and use this ring which is almost finished uh, uh, it would be very crucial to make 
sure that I get it perfectly center on the next time because I don't have any thickness really to take off anything from it so it would be pretty much to keep it the way it is Well, I must say, this is not one of my better pieces, but uh, I will post this just so you guys know what I did with the very last piece of the burl. Um, like I said, if I was this, if I get discouraged enough with it, I will pot it out and uh, redo the bottom. I'm not too crazy about the bottom. Well, that's what it is. That's what I'm going to get out of it for now. Maybe it will grow on me. Let me know what you think. I really think I should uh, part this out over here. So I get a little bit thicker. Bring a piece from the bottom up and uh, rework this whole piece. This would have looked nice with that small burl in the middle over here and it would have been a nice look to it. But the way it is right now, just uh, the brown and then this red, which doesn't pick up from anywhere. Uh, I'm not too keen on it. If it picked up this color back in the center again, it would have been nice. It would have been a highlight ring. But the majority of it is this cherry and the maple. and. Uh, in my view, it's not a very appealing look. Now on the bottom, I haven't done anything with it. Haven't wet sanded it. Haven't trued up this uh, center any. But what I want to do is basically keep this foot Clean this up, sand it down, and just concave this area right here. And the bowl will actually sit is on this piece right here. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to set up my buffing disc if I find it. And for some reason, I can't figure out where it is. I'm going to go to a very old method that I've used many times in the past. And that is my roller tape. Just put a little bit of pressure on it. Protect it with a little bit of paper towel just to cushion it a little bit. And bring my life center in. Now, some of you might have seen me using this method before but this required a little bit more sanding if I'm gonna do anything with this piece so before I do that I'm gonna sand that down
somewhat disappointed uh, with this piece but mostly because of the choice that I made with the cherry in the center uh, had I gone maple had I gone anything else probably would have been better uh, with a lighter color but that one that complements this and this reddish color does not go with anything else in the book. Uh, you know, you might think different, and you know, and it's it's what I'm picking up. It's my eye. Uh, that's what I'm going basing it on, and uh, you could have a very different opinion. Of it. But, so it would be great to hear what you guys think, because I'm curious as to how different is my vision from yours. Because we all look at things slightly different from each other and my taste might not be your taste. So here's the last of the burrow and I thought it was going to be more like a platter but it's actually a little bit of a bowl. Bottom nothing too fancy the crack on the cherry uh, kind of bothers me a little bit uh, it's not the type of piece that should have cracks and uh, it will just kind of tell me that later on I'll probably want to do something different with this but for now this was today make this as promised work on my lathe, get my variable speed work working with the external controller. The forward reverse, well I got the forward to work. Uh, that's as much as I'm gonna get. Waiting on the RPM pickup to put into it, which I will. It will be nice just to know. I know more or less. I mean, I can tell right now I'm going around 200 RPMs, but that's not true. Uh, because I don't know for a fact. I'm guessing. Uh, you know, so, but the lathe is running nice. So, I'm glad that I've done all the things that I've done to it uh, recently. It just made it that much better. The only thing that it lacks right now is weight. And I've been contemplating on what to do. And I know I can put sandbags on the bottom, and but I, that's not the route I want to go. Concrete, on the other hand, pre-mixed and making a base for it. Uh, that will be rock solid. That is more in the area that I'm leaning so we'll see time of course is the the major uh, major thing that I have to deal with you know do I have time or not to even do something like that but it's a project that can be done in a few hours if I put my uh, mind to it and get all the equipment over here and then uh, do what I want. I have an idea of what I want. So it shouldn't be too bad. See you next time. Maybe with that in mind. Take care.